about Navy sweethearts in every port, and the pinup girls are the boys who sail the seven seas. But I'd like you to meet the real sweetheart of the Navy, 1944 model. You mean me? No, not you, Red. I mean her. She's a patrol torpedo, a PT to the Navy, and I guess only another boat to a landlubber. But to the guys who take her out, she's a high-stepping, sweet-singing Lulu. She's built for speed and rough weather and danger in far waters. She's a power-packing mama with a thunderbolt punch in either hand, and her foaming wake has marked the grave of many an enemy ship. She's got the temper of a tornado and the personality of a wildcat. And boy, do we love her. You see, she was a war big. It takes thousands of skilled workers, three ships to them, to build Uncle Sam's PT fleet. And they're turning out these long, sleek hulls much too fast to suit the enemy. Women and girls drill holes for the seams, while hammers join the chorus. And veteran workers shape more fittings. Riveting, too, is women's work. And striping those big torpedo tubes the job of another. While still another deftly braids the wiring that gives the PT its spark and light. A veteran worker is Frederick Buckley, going strong at 77. His son, Commander John Buckley, led a PT squadron in the Philippines and is one of the most decorated heroes of the war. Bet you're mighty proud of that boy of yours, aren't you, Dad? Now the boat is ready for launching. A crane lifts her off the dock and swings her over the waiting water that is to be her home. There's no ceremony here, no time or need for it. These speedy torpedo carriers are built for action, and the whole idea is to produce them quickly and hurry them off to the battle zones. Meanwhile, at the huge Packard factory in Detroit, Powerful marine engines are being forged in fiery furnaces, the molten metal carefully skimmed of all impurities. Then the finished ingots are thrust into ladles to be melted again, and poured into iron cauldrons for the 4,000-pound punch of a giant drop hammer. Now a gleaming aluminum crankcase is ready to be anodized. The aluminum metal is dipped for several seconds in a red dye, and presto, it comes up a bright yellow, forever sealed against the destructive corrosion of the sea. Next, the welders, sewing the cool iron jackets to the cylinder heads. Then the block is lowered into position and joined to the completed crankcase. Now the hole is ready for assembly. Pistons and bearings and carburetors and wiring and all the thousands of precision parts that go into the building of this great power plant. Say, it must sound like I know an awful lot about PTs. Well, I do. That's me, Bob Palmer. I used to work at Packard until I got my commission in the Navy. That's why I chose the PT service. This was the last engine I was to work on. And I kind of felt I ought to put my trademark on her. Hmm. Red paint. Nobody seems to be looking. I just take a chance and tattoo this baby. Never could tell. We might meet again. Somewhere out there where we both were going. And if we did, I'd know her. Oh. I... Well, I didn't mean, sir, I mean, I mean, I didn't, I, I didn't, but he was Navy and understood. He shook my hand and wished me luck. Indoctrination school. Didn't look much like an officer at first, but after six weeks, the Navy had sharpened me plenty. Then it was on to the PT base at Melville, Rhode Island. It was a great moment when the Marine Guard opened that gate and we showed our orders. Melville's the patrol torpedo training school. And when you come out, you're a full-fledged PT combat officer. Meet Joe Smith, my buddy and one swell guy. Smitty's brother had been lost on a PT in the Pacific. From the beginning, Melville meant something very special to us. You sensed its spirit when you saw the proud, determined bearing of the enlisted men who had come from all branches of the Navy for PT training. Each had volunteered for this more dangerous service. Each had been selected only after rigid physical and mental tests. They had a real right to be proud. And Smitty and I felt pretty humble just watching them. Melville is the PT Annapolis, and already its heroes are legion. Many of our instructors were returned heroes. I recognized them at once. Men like Faulkner, Navy Cross, sank two destroyers. Gamble, Navy Cross, sank or damaged three destroyers. Robinson, Silver Star, one destroyer. Al Snowball, Jap submarine. And Taylor, one destroyer, one light cruiser. Now the new class was assembled to hear an address by Lieutenant Faulkner. He didn't say much, but what he did say meant plenty. Gentlemen, I congratulate you on being selected for Melville. Now let's get down to business. PT may stand for many things, but here it stands for patrol torpedo and plenty tough. You men are to receive two months of the most intensive mental and physical training. 
You'll finish as PT combat officers, or you won't finish. It's up to you. Good luck, and good hunting. And that was that. Served with plenty of mustard. Now we wondered when we'd get to ride on a PT. Then over the loudspeaker... Now look at the list. Student officers of the Blue Man report at once to the schedule of PT number one, service three, for indoctrination crews. Brother, that was an invitation we'd been waiting for. They decked us out in underway gear and we started down the dock. Then flags broke and bright semaphore from the signal tower. The glass was raised to inspect the harbor. And there she was. Every trim line of her alive and beautiful. Going aboard for the first time was something to remember. Like coming face to face with a girl you'd been crazy to meet but hadn't dared approach. You felt scared and happy and, and all tight inside. Suddenly the skipper gave the command to cast off. The lines were freed and deftly coiled. The skipper's hand was on the throttle and you held on hard as you felt the surging power beneath your feet and watched the water frothing into foam. The cow dug in for a sprinter's toe. The throttle was shoved full speed and then we were racing like a rocket for the open sea. Talk about your Miss Americas and all those other high-powered speedboats. Brother, you've never moved on water until you've ridden one of these galloping comets. It was rough, nerve-jarring, non-stop action, and it shook you loose from everything you'd ever held sacred. She did a merry dance out there, half jitterbug and half a die show. And when she lunged past Brenton Reef Lightship, you knew you were really on your way to sea. I looked over our armament, the hard-hitting guns, the four torpedoes that carried sudden death to anything from a corvette to a battleship, the depth charges that could hammer an enemy sub into scrap iron. Yes, these babies were really loaded for fair. The skipper called me forward. All right. We were due for a lesson in preliminary boat handling. He explained about the wheel and how a PT could be kept under control even in the heaviest seas. He showed us how to keep her steady on a simple turn, how to straighten her out with just the right pressure, then a sharper turn, never losing your firm grip as she arched into it. The skipper wanted us to get the feel of the boat and see how smartly she handled. Finally, it was my turn. I was pretty scared at first. I gripped the wheel like a wrestler putting on a hammerlock. Gradually, I realized this sea bronco wasn't so tough after all. What had I been worrying about anyway? I wondered what she'd do if I just gave her a real twist. Then the skipper took over, and we headed home. How'd you like it, Smitty? <laughs> there wasn't any doubt about PT meaning plenty tough. And that went for physical training, too. <laughs> Boxing was my dish, too, until... <clears throat> but judo wrestling. Brother, I knew all the tricks. Just watch me take this guy. Ouch! There were books on navigation with plenty of longitude and latitude. There was working over charts like this one of the Japan Sea. That was one pond I intended to be on when the fireworks started. There was learning to use a sextant. Hours spent in plane identification class. More hours with two-way radio. There was wireless, an important little item to every sailor. Rules of the road were important too, and you learned them well. Books and more books until you were practically living in them and pumping your way from class to class. Torpedo instruction was something we'd all look forward to. These were the fangs of the PT and deadly poison to enemy ships. Mm, nice baby. Watch it, Palmer. Dowie! All of us had to learn diving. You never know when you'll have to hide out in some enemy patrolled harbor and make your own repairs. The instructor explained the workings of the helmet. Boy, I hope he doesn't call on me to demonstrate it. Smitty wasn't too anxious to go either. Poor Smitty. Oh, me? 